The name of this tune is Mississippi Goddamn. This is CJ, and you're hearing a better recording of Nina Simone's famous song than the Kimi Levy Pound, civil rights attorney and immediate past leader of the Minneapolis NAACP. This is part two of my interview with the now announced Minneapolis mayoral candidate who describes herself as an agitator for justice. I could not believe one of the most active protest leaders in the Metro had never heard the greatest song ever written about racial and social injustice. And Levy Pounds is from Mississippi. After razzing her about this gap in her musical knowledge, we talked about related subjects au courant. When people need to respond to the name Black Lives Matter by saying all lives matter, is that an indication they don't get it or that they don't care? It's a way, once again, of deflecting from the main purpose of the movement, which is to address um, state-sanctioned violence against African Americans and to make sure that those debts are not being swept under the rug through um, our current system of policing and politics. I think it's an indication that they don't get it. Um, and some people really don't care. Because if they believe that all lives matter, then they would be right out there on the front lines protesting and demonstrating with us. What can protesters do to protest Philando Castile, and I think, he, I think that that case deserves all the protesting that you're willing to do, that doesn't involve being on interstates, which I think is just, I think it's stupid. It's not creative for me anymore. And, it's, and it also turns on people who would normally be behind. Well, I disagree. <laughs> for a number of reasons. It forces them to stop um, their daily routine and to pay attention because they're stuck on a freeway. It also impacts interstate commerce. Um, impacts the economy when uh, traffic is blocked and it costs the government money you know when they bring out law enforcement to remove people from freeways. I'm going to make you Minneapolis police chief for a year. <laughs> uh oh. How are you going to reform the police in Minneapolis? Well that's easy. First I would uh, call out Bob Crow for his conduct, which I already do. Um, and I would actually really crack down on the rank and file officers about who they have chosen to lead them and what that says about them as a collective body. Beyond that, I would go through the files of all of the officers um, who work under my jurisdiction and I would screen those out who have a number of excessive force complaints and um, either relocate them or offer them a deal to leave the, that police department. I would also have conversations with City Hall about removing low-level ordinances from the books that are actually um, draining resources and are not contributing positively to public safety. I would um, set up pipeline programs to recruit more people of color, women, and people with disabilities to the Minneapolis Police Department. And I would um, push for the city council and the mayor's office to provide incentives for um, more police officers to live in the jurisdictions in which they're paid to patrol. Do you think you could have been a police officer? No. Why not? <laughs> it's just that simple, no. First of all, I don't like the nature of the job itself. I love the aspects that are helpful. Someone stuck on the side of the road or when serious harm has happened in the community and you don't have any other alternatives. You know, sometimes there's nowhere to go but the police to get them to intervene. What I don't like is the um, increasing militarization of our police forces where our federal government has allowed the transfer of military weapons and equipment to local departments, including tanks. Right. I'm thinking, why would equipment and materials that are used to fight terrorism and wars in other parts of the world be used here domestically um, against citizens of this country? It makes no sense. Um, I also think, as we mentioned earlier, there's a problem with the training. Is there anything much on your driving record? Uh, quite a bit of parking tickets <laughs> on my driving record, because I tend to park and then run in somewhere or stay at a meeting longer than I should. <laughs> okay. Um, I probably have maybe, I would say, let me see, when was my last speeding ticket? It was in a different state. 
So I think I have a couple from driving cross country um, way too fast just trying to get back to Minnesota. But I don't get pulled over very often. Um, one of my tickets actually um, had led to my license being suspended for a short period of time because it was out of state. Uh -huh. I got pulled over by a police officer in a diner shortly after the occupation ended at the 4th Precinct. And I'm like, why am I being pulled over? And they said, your license is suspended. And I'm like, my license is not suspended. And so um, when I went to the DMV and did the research, I realized it was a ticket that I got last September driving through um, Missouri. Oh, okay. And um, now in Minnesota, if you have a ticket from out of state that's unpaid, oh. they will suspend your license. Oh, wow. So that's what happened to me. But I went, paid the fine, and got everything squared away. What's the first thing you say if you, when you're pulled over by police? Why did you pull me over? That's my first question. And then I, <laughs> depending on the situation, I respond accordingly. And if my kids are in the car, I tell them, do not do what you see me doing. If you get a ticket, call me and just, you know. <laughs> but for me personally, especially if I feel that it's unjust, mm -hmm. then I'm going to confront that officer, okay. point blank. And I'm unapologetic about that. But I tell my children, just accept the ticket, comply, and then contact me. I want you to get out of that encounter alive. Right. I'm not as worried about myself. Okay. Because as a lawyer, I can handle myself and I know how to talk to police. This is a short tune, but the show hasn't been written for it yet.